So there is a PDF you can download that has examples or you can just use your own music from Bach. Uh, the PDF has bar numbers that allegedly correspond to the bar numbers in the actual Bach music if you want to look at it that way. But the next excerpt is from the last moment, the Gigue of the third suite, the C major suite. This is something that many people find very, very difficult because it turns around in the middle. So this is a great way to practice your two note slurs back and forth. So the way it starts, um, if you're looking at the excerpt, it starts on bar 20 of the Gigue. Uh, it starts with an upbeat and then we're doing slurs where we have G string on the beat and we're lifting up to the D. And my arm is up on the D string level. And then I, I do you do that for four bars. So before you even put your fingers on, do four bars of that and then it turns around. So I'm going one, two, That is a really hard thing to do if you're going fast on the jig. So when we're working out that kind of complicated bowing where our arm tends to hitch, we want to be really good at both directions, whether you're starting with your uh, beginning of the slur on the upper note or the lower note. And then you can add the fingers in. It's the same kind of deal that we worked on from the first excerpt of the first suite, which is that literally, this is something that I didn't say in the first suite, but when we play these kinds of things, we can practice them this way. doing crossing strings we want to try to minimize the amount of fingers flying up in the air it makes it very difficult to actually catch the string if your fingers are leaving leaving the string as the as the bow is leaving the string as well it confuses your bow your bow can't tell where clear is when your fingers are popping up in the air and it also makes it just that much harder rhythmically to coordinate um, okay so once you have gotten this part that could be better in tune right once you've gotten that worked out and you've gotten this with the change change and i, I find that if I, I have to tell my arm what's happening you're gonna be pulling down bow on that d string when the change happens so then you can try it all together my wrist. Ready, change. And then I can play the rest. And then the same exact passage comes in the second half, but turned around yet one more way. So you have to be really good at all the combinations here. So the passage when it happens again, now we're going D string drop to G. And that's harder because in the first excerpt, the combination was starting on the G string going up to the D. And when we turned it around, it was still those same two strings. But in the second excerpt, you start with the D string going down to G string and then it flips D string up to A string. So it doesn't, it's not just the reverse of what you were doing, but a totally different level. So in other words, then the exercise you're practicing here, you're going D down to G and up. One of the sticking points I think for, for our arm is that you must lift up your arm when you go to the A version, the version that's D to A, you've got to get your arm up in the air at your elbow level, otherwise you get stuck. This one is, this can be a really hard one for people. I always find if I'm playing this movement fast that this second combo is harder. And even when you are getting more fingers on the strings, <laughs> still trying to hold on to fingers as we go 
and then it turns around one more time. So that second excerpt, which is the one that begins at bar 80, has three combinations. We start, we're going D down to G. slurs with your wrist. These are wonderful challenges to try, This, especially this jig from the third suite. And whether or not you're working on these box suites, I think they're really interesting to see what do I do with my wrist in context? How can I really challenge that technical uh, skill? Good luck and smooth string crossings to you all.